Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series where I cover a topic in about five minutes. Um, I'm on the floor right now because Colonel Panic asked what my um, setup was for my microphone. And I know it's upside down, but for the most important part might be the cloud lifter here. Um, it's a, this is the CL2, it's a two channel. Right now I've only got one microphone, which is the one I'm speaking into right now hooked up to it. But basically what this does is it allows you to use phantom power to really boost a signal. And that's pretty important for trying to get a clean audio signal. I have used dynamic mics for a long time and never used something like this. And I understand it's really important for condenser mics, but it's actually been even really good for my um, AKG dynamic mic that I've got and has made a huge difference. So if you're looking for something to boost your signal, definitely look into either the one or two channel cloud lifter. It doesn't require its own power. It just takes it from phantom power and does a lot of magic. Um, just one second. Uh, just going to put that down. I want to scroll over to the rest of the rack here. So you can see as I'm talking, there's a few things going on and I'm going to kind of sit on the floor. Whoop. Sorry. I don't mean to be bumping the mic around so much, but the important part of what I've got set up here, I mean, there's a bunch of things going on, but I've got up top, I've got the Behringer uh, tube amplifier, which it's arguable or debatable whether or not I need this based on having the cloud lifter, but I've got that set up because it kind of gives a little bit more analog warmth to the sound and I can use it for some of the shaping. Um, you can see I'm not really driving the signal very hard though, because you can see that like green LED that's kind of moving over. Um, this is a two channel, so I can actually have both the AKG and the Shure mic that I usually use for doing these, um, these recordings. Um, so it is nice to be able to have the two channels underneath that. I have this, uh, it's a compressor, de -er, and, uh, audio gate. So it really, I'm in a small office and a lot of background noise, um, fans and I mean, they're not really fans right now, but even like having my neighbors when they're like out mowing the lawn and stuff, it, the gate and limiter help reduce any of the background noise or hearing a whole lot of the echo in the room, even though like, I know it's there, I can hear it. Cause as I'm talking, I can hear the echo. The microphone really does a pretty good job through the, this, um, gate and limiter to, basically just cut that out. So it kind of, once the volume falls off, it just kind of, you can see it kind of coming in and where it's going red. It's just like, nah, there's nothing going through. It's not passing through that gate. Um, and then other underneath, um, the question that uh, Colonel Panic had asked was like, oh, I'd never heard about an oral exciter. What is it? Um, basically it allows you to tune harmonics and kind of accentuate some of them, move things around. I am actually not going to touch either of these two green buttons down here because I don't know what happened to them, but uh, they are pretty stuck in a bad way that if I go use them to enable and disable the um, effect, it will probably get stuck off and then I'll have to take it apart and try and fix it again. So I've got it set so that it works this way, but if you want I can, I'll lean over and I can get the uh, mixer knob and kind of mix it in and out. Yeah, so this is the, should be the mixer knob. If I turn it down, you can kind of hear that it gets a different tone in my voice a little bit here. And if I put it back up where it was, it is picking a little up like and kind of accentuating some of the background noise, but it was just one of those things between all of these knobs for the three devices, I just spent some time kind of tuning, tweaking, and learning about where things would work with this condenser mic and trying to find something where I would get it to sound where I thought it was kind of pleasing or worked the way I wanted to. So um, is it absolutely necessary uh, for the oral exciter? Probably not. Um, I mean, it's my voice sounded fine, I guess, more or less without it, but... As I said, I kind of tweaked it and that's just the setting that I ended up sticking with. Um, and honestly, it's something that like, it's got the, um, you can't see me scare quoting, but I'll scare quote here, scare quote, big bottom bass. Um, 
I did. I, the reason why I actually bought this was when I was doing electronic music, it was something that I would set up and run bases through and make them just hit even harder. Uh, I could go in and add it into my patch bay so I could patch it in and out. I just have been, it's, it is a mess behind there. There's a lot of patch cables and I haven't wanted to redo things yet. I probably will because I need more, um, TRS, uh, quarter inch TRS to uh, quarter inch, uh, TS, uh, left and right channels set up so that I can repatch some of the patch bay to, um, accommodate for some more channels and things, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. Anyway, I don't know if that helps you out or hopefully that it kind of explains to some extent kind of what I've got, why I got it, but that's what I've got for my vocals here. I've got the patches up here for both the AKG and the Shure that are going into, mm, can't see it. It's up a little bit higher, but the mixer board is right above it. So I can mix in each mic individually and, you know, do some of the EQing there as well if I wanted to. Although I really wanted to have everything kind of taken care of in these three racks that I wanted to get the sound I was looking for. So anyway, guys, hope that helps. Colonel Panic, thanks for the question. If you got more, uh, anybody, feel free to shoot them over. Happy to try and answer as much as I can. Um, but beyond that, thanks for stopping by. Keep making music. Keep having fun. Remember, if it sounds good, it is good. And peace.